to the bill. Senator Stedman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, third time's a charm, isn't it? Friends, colleagues, we are gathered here today to debate the worthiness of our fellow Coloradans' lives and their loves and their dignity and their rights, their equal rights under law. And so I ask this of all of you, everyone gathered here today, all of you watching and listening, everyone who is present, and to all those who are missing, where are we now? Are we at a tipping point? Or have we already passed that point? Are we ready to pass civil unions at a time when many in our state are ready for something bigger and more bold? Where are we now? We're on the floor of the Colorado Senate. And this is a moment that we've waited for. This is an idea whose time has come. Senator Guzman and I are very proud to present Senate Bill 11, and we, will hope, and we hope that you will join us in celebrating this opportunity to advance civil rights today. For civil unions are civil rights. All of the issues that Senate Bill 11 deals with are matters of civil law. Probate, domestic relations, insurance, health care. Civil unions confer rights that most couples take for granted. Civil unions create access to basic legal protections, things that no family should be without. This bill is about life, and it's about death, and it's about everything in between. For this is life, this bill is for the living, so that they may live life fully and find someone someone that you can share yourself with. Senate Bill 11 is for those of you who are lucky enough to have someone, to love someone, or lucky enough to find that person. Someone that you will share the rest of your life with. Someone to have and to hold. Someone you'll buy a house with. Someone you'll start a family with. Someone you will build a career with someone you will plan your retirements with in sickness and in health. And when all of these things happen, and more, you know, who knows what's going to happen during the in-between from the beginning of life until the moment of death. Who knows what's really going to happen? But the nice thing is that we have laws, laws that we make right here in this Senate, in this General Assembly, that deal with so many of the things that happen to you over the course of a lifetime. These are laws that we make for a civil society. Laws that provide for the orderly transition of property and estates. Laws that provide for child support and pensions, death and dissolution. These are civil laws and civil unions will be one of them. This is a civil law, and it is how we are civilized in a civil society. We have laws, civil laws. Just think about our laws. Think about the entire probate code or the family law code. These aren't just simple concepts. They are detailed statutory schemes. This General Assembly wrote them, all of those details, we wrote those laws, and we can write this one. Senate Bill 11 is just another example of a law written in this building to deal with life and death and everything in between, whether it's children or property or other circumstances. The laws that Senate Bill 11 makes applicable to civil unions are laws that already exist. Now, I'm not going to stack up the statute books on the desk behind me this year to show you what I'm talking about. I think you remember that visual. You've seen that before. You know that the issues we're talking about in this bill are all issues that we've already codified in the Colorado Revised Statutes. And what's at stake here, 
through this legally recognized relationship is access to those laws for some people that are today excluded. This is a legal relationship that is formed at a county clerk's office. When you sign on the dotted line, you pay a small filing fee. It's all spelled out in the bill, very administ administratively, I might add. A civil union is formed when two consenting adults choose to make a legally binding commitment to one another, a commitment that only the operation of law may set aside or until death do they part. This relationship status, this civil union, enables two people to gain access to rights and protections and responsibilities, things that most people take for granted until they need them or until they have to fight for them. Now I know this is not a bill that is a simple bill. I know it's not without controversy. I know that there are many who will claim that what we're doing here today in writing this law is somehow creating a, a different but essentially similar form of marriage. And I want to argue with you today that civil unions are not marriage. They're quite different. The two things are completely separate and unequal. Civil unions do not violate Article 2, Section 31 of our state constitution, for, civil, for Senate Bill 11 does not create marriages. Senate Bill 11 is a statutory creation, something this General Assembly does all the time, something entitled to a presumption of constitutionality. We're doing exactly what we were elected to do, making laws for our constituents, the people of Colorado. We're solving problems. We're helping people live and get along in our civil society. That's what I was elected to do, as were we all, liberty and justice for all. But it's not just about liberty and justice and equality. It's also about that most enduring um, thing that we all seek in our life, love. I'd like to quote um, from President Obama's recent second inaugural address because there was a line from that address that really struck me and it speaks directly to this bill. Our president just a few weeks ago said, for if we are all truly equal, then surely the love we commit to one another must be equal as well. It reminded me of the points I wanted to make this year about the equal opportunity to find someone to love, about how love is all that matters. Two people finding love, structuring their lives around that love, sharing that love with one another and their families, our society and the world. Senate Bill 11 is for lovers and the gifts they give to one another. And Senate Bill 11 is our gift to them. If two people are lucky enough to have found each other, why should the state of Colorado stand in their way? Why should state law make their lives more difficult? Why shouldn't our laws apply equally to everyone. So I know that there are some that are going to argue that civil unions are simply equal to marriage and, and I'm anticipating that there'll be questions about how really do these two things differ. So I'll tell you how they're different. They're different in lots of ways, significant ways. First, there's all those federal benefits, little things like social security, tax shelters, things we all pay for, but not all of us get. That's different. And then there's the novelty of it all. What's a civil union? Will people know what it means? What if you travel out of state? Will anyone know what you're talking about? But perhaps the biggest difference of all is probably best described by one of the witnesses who testified in favor of this bill in the Judiciary Committee when he said, 
Words have meaning. That in and of itself makes it different. But here's another little difference, one to think about, one that illustrates my point. Let's contrast civil unions with common law marriage. Colorado is one of nine states that recognizes common law marriage. It's been with us since before statehood. It was born out of the need to marry and the scarcity of those who could perform or license a marriage. So the common law let couples marry themselves. I think this is so because marriage, colleagues, has always been viewed as some sort of sacred right. People were able to do it without government permission or involvement. That's a common law marriage. No license, no justice of the peace, no courthouse. You just declare yourself married and you are. Legal criteria have been established for proving a common law marriage. The theory can be tested in court, but the ability to create one is an individual right, a natural right. In our state, two individuals can make themselves one couple with all the trappings and accoutrement of state law that comes with an illegal marriage. All by themselves, no government involved. Sounds pretty great, huh? Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty special, all right. These are some special rights right there we're talking about. Now, contrast civil unions. There's no such thing as a common law civil union, and there isn't anything sacred about it. You can't just declare yourself united in a civil unit and so be it, so in a civil union and so be it. A civil union exists only because of state statute. It must be licensed. You must fill out the forms. You must pay a fee to some pointy-headed little bureaucrat behind the county clerk's office counter. Government must be involved. This is no natural right. It's one created right here in this room, in this building, created in statute by this General Assembly. It's why we are here to spell out the rules, to make laws about how things are supposed to happen. And this, colleagues, is especially important when things happen that aren't supposed to happen. I'm thinking about things like cancer, the hospital emergency room, car accidents. I'm thinking about admitting someone to the secure Alzheimer's ward at a nursing home. If you're a legal wonk lawyer, you may be thinking about things like guardianship and conservatorship and lots of other legalistic things that we've written into the Colorado Revised Statutes over the years. Lots of things happen over the course of a lifetime that really weren't supposed to happen, that maybe you were not prepared for. And this is when it matters. This is when a legally recognized relationship matters most. It's in these times of challenge and controversy that your standing as a person with legal rights really matters. So why, colleagues, should the state of Colorado stand in the way? For some, I know this is, is controversial. For some, I think it makes people un uncomfortable. They'll tell you that they don't want gay people sitting on the bus next to them. They'd rather the gays stayed far to the back of the bus, far, far away. They claim that their religious liberty interests would be violated, that their free exercise of religion is infringed somehow by a civil union that may be formed by a couple that doesn't look like them. It's an interesting claim. Let's think about it for a second. There are bakeries, bakeries that sell cakes and cookies that say it is against their religion if a gay couple wants to buy a cake. We are told there are florists that don't want to sell roses to gay couples, restaurants that don't want them at their lunch counters. Banquet halls, banquet halls, you know the kind, 
places you rent for weddings or bar mitzvahs, family reunions or 50th wedding anniversaries, birthdays, company dinner parties. There are banquet halls that say it would violate their religious liberty to rent their facility to a gay couple. We can't serve them, they claim. Now, I know it, it, it sounds like I'm exaggerating, doesn't it? But am I? It seems odd to me that this argument is always about a cake or a photographer or a florist or a banquet hall, <laughs> but it's never about a jeweler, now is it? You always, they'll always be there to sell you an expensive ring. You never hear tales of pettiness and denials of service when it's gold or platinum or diamonds that are involved. But I digress. And actually, come to think about it, the stories about florists, well, that's probably an exaggeration as well. After all, Senator Johnston, most florists know the difference between a corsage and a boutonniere now, don't they? But whether illustrated by exaggeration or not, this is how the argument goes. My religion says I can't help you. God told me to hate you or to at least hate your sin. And so you can't buy a cake here and you can't rent our banquet hall. Should the state of Colorado give effect to this type of discrimination? Should state government let religion, one religion, decide who gets served and who gets left out? Should religion trump laws of general applicability? I don't think so. And we've written Senate Bill 11 to make sure that this separation between religious belief and what's happening here in our state code, in our statutes, our civil laws are kept se separate. For Senate Bill 11 respects religious freedom. This bill does not reach into anyone's church or mosque or synagogue. You can have all the free exercise there that you want. Exercise it as you see fit. But don't let your free exercise run my life. Don't claim religion as a reason the law should discriminate. We have laws against discrimination. Discrimination is banned in employment and housing and public accommodations. And so bakeries that serve the public aren't supposed to look down their noses at one particular class of persons and say, we don't sell cakes to you. It's troubling, this discrimination and it's already illegal. So, what to say to those who claim that religion requires them to discriminate? I'll tell you what I'd say. Get thee to a nunnery and live there then. Go live a monastic life away from modern society, away from the people you can't see as equals to yourself, away from the stream of commerce where you may have to serve them or employ them or rent banquet halls to them. Go someplace and be as judgmental as you like. Go inside your church, establish separate water fountains in there if you want, but don't claim that free exercise of religion requires the state of Colorado to establish separate water fountains for her citizens. That's not what we're doing here. We are tearing down barriers, not erecting them. We are offering inclusion and equal protection of the law. So, where are we now? We're in the Colorado Senate and we're making a new law. A law that carries forward the promise of equal protection for all. A law that is fair, a law that embodies our, sh our shared ideals of justice. Laws, a law that respects religious liberty in a pluralistic society and doesn't, and, uh, tries to avoid imposing one set of beliefs on all. Where are we? We're in the Colorado Senate. We're making a law that offers real opportunity and addresses real injustices. And we are not making a law that puts forward one particular religious faith's beliefs. Colleagues, this is not Mount Sinai. This is the Colorado Senate. We are not handing down religious pronouncements. We're not sitting here in judgment. We are writing laws for all the people, protecting all the people 
offering all the people the promise of liberty and justice for all. We are recognizing the inherent dignity and worth of all of our citizens and making sure that our laws apply equally to them all. And so I would ask you today to join me in supporting Senate Bill 11, a law whose time has come, a law that I'm very proud to have worked to get it to this point, and with your help, we'll make sure it gets even further. Slow curtain, the end.